Question D asks us, and before we look at that again, let's remind us just what the question was saying. The question said that a rocket was launched, it accelerated upwards at 46 meters per second squared, that acceleration lasted for 7 seconds, then the engine stopped. Obviously after the engine stopped it was still traveling upwards but it was losing a velocity because of downward acceleration until it reached its maximum height after which it started falling downwards again. Okay, so with that in mind they ask us the time between when the engine stopped, in other words from this point, and when the rocket reached the launching point. Okay, so the engine stopped here, it went up all the way and then it came back down until it reached the ground again from where it was launched. They want this time that elapsed. Okay, I'm going to draw that in white so we can clearly see it. Uh, let's draw it even thicker. So this is the path that it traveled up, reached its maximum height and then it came down again. Okay. We want the time of this path. So let's see what information do we know about that path. And just so that we don't make more of a mess here, let me go and redraw this path right here. So there the engine stopped, reached its maximum height and came back down. Here is where the engine stopped. There is where it reached its launching position. What information do we know at this point? Well, we know the velocity at this point. Um, let me choose a different color. Okay, we know the initial velocity was given as 322 meters per second. We know that during this whole time the engine is not running, so acceleration is equal to negative 9,8. Uh, what else do we know? Well, uh, we calculated this height. This height. So we know what this height is right there. This height we calculated as, there it is, delta x is 1127. In other words, that's how high it was when the engine stopped. Now what that also tells me is that I know from where the engine stopped, till where it's back on the ground, I know this distance. But now, make sure that you understand that this displacement is now downwards from where the engine stopped to where it ends. So now displacement is the same value but negative 1127 because this is displacement downwards now. In, the, in that question we calculated the distance from where it was launched to where the engine stopped. So obviously from where the engine stopped to where it was launched is negative that value. I hope you understand that. Do we have three values yet? Look at that. Initial velocity, change in displacement and acceleration is the values that we do have. So we want to go and calculate according to them the time. So we want to calculate delta t. We need a formula with delta t, a, delta x and v. Uh, where do we have? Uh, yeah, there we go. Here we have x, vi, delta t, and acceleration. So that is the formula that we are going to use to solve this last question. That formula says that delta x is equal to the initial velocity times time plus a half times acceleration times time squared. When we substitute, we see that's negative 1127. That is our change in displacement is equal to initial velocity was given as 322 meters per second time is what we want to go calculate plus a half acceleration is negative 9,8 because we chose upwards as positive or were given upwards as possible as positive and we need to go and calculate delta t now with this in mind, we once again see that our unknown is a quad, uh, has a square. That means we're working with a quadratic function and we need to get this format. ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Now, if we get that, we know that the unknown that we're trying to find x, and just 
so I'm not confusing you I'm not talking about the change in displacement I'm just talking about solving a quadratic equation x is equal to negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a now with that in mind let's go and substitute because or actually first let's go and rewrite this one in terms of um, ax squared plus bx plus c in that format to do that i see that my x square or in this case my t square has a coefficient of and if i multiply a half with a negative 4.9.8 uh, i get negative 4.9 now if i look at negative 4.9 and it's on the right hand side of the equation means if I take it to the left hand side that would be positive so I'm taking everything to the left hand side so that I don't have this negative 4.9 then I have positive 4.9 delta t squared now the 322 delta t becomes negative 322 delta t because it's going to the left hand side and then I have already there a negative 1127 Okay, all this is equal to zero, and now I hope you see that this is my A, that is my B, and that is my C. So substituting in, I get that delta T is equal to negative B is negative of negative is positive 322 plus minus. So I see I'm going to have two answers here for T. Okay, B squared is now negative 322 squared minus 4 times a is 4 times 4 comma 9 times c which is negative 1127 negative 1127 okay close that in the denominator i have 2a which is simply 2 times 4 comma 9 and this i need to do with my calculator and we need some calculator skills to do a question like this the calculator skill I am going to use is to actually store this square root inside my calculator's memory. And I do that by saying 322 negative squared. So I'm first doing the inside, the interior of the square root. 322 negative squared gives me positive 103.684 minus 4 times 4.9 times 1127 also with a negative okay so we get 125773.2 that is the interior of this um, square root so to take the square root of that gives me 354.65 blah 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 it goes on okay this is what I want to store in my memory so therefore I click MS which stands for memory store I store that in my memory and later on when I want to recall it I will press MR for memory recall now what I can do is I can clear the screen don't press MC that will clear the memory clear the screen with C and then we can start pressing this the rest of this equation so I have two answers one where I have Delta T with uh, 322 plus and one with 322 minus so if I 322 plus and now I want to recall the answer I got so I say memory recall is equal to 676.64 okay and I want to divide that with 2 times 4.9 now 2 times 4.9 is just 9.8 again so I'm just going to divide with 9.8 okay that gives me 69,0405 actually comma zero five seconds okay that's the one part of the answer let's try the next part delta t that's where it's a negative so on my uh, clear the screen have 322 minus memory recall is my memory recall 354 that's the in uh, the, the answer of the square root equal to get the total for the top divided by 9.8 and here we see something very curious that is negative three comma three three seconds okay so at negative three point three seconds that doesn't make sense at all this is this is actually quite nonsense okay but it does like make a little bit of sense let's quickly have a look why does it make a little bit of sense okay 
what it does tell me is I'm I'm asking at what time what is the time when I will reach this position and according to the answers it is after 69.05 seconds so after 69.05 seconds I will be there that is if I measure time from this point the negative 3.33 seconds even though it's a scalar time is a scalar we don't uh, measure it in negatives but it does actually tell me that it was negative 3.33 seconds ago that I was here which is not really true okay we know that it was sec seven seconds ago that I was here but um, the reason why it's different is because we had upwards acceleration here in other words this part of the journey had a different acceleration than um, than the one we are using so that is why this one was actually seven seconds upwards but it would have been only 3.3 seconds if it was dropped from that point okay so with that in mind our answer is simply only this six point 69.5 seconds that one does not make sense for this specific part of the question so let's enter our answers we know that is our formula we know the values here that initial velocity is 322 future velocity we don't know okay that would have been the velocity wherewith it reached the ground again that velocity and even though this rocket was launched at zero meters per second okay it doesn't reach it at zero meters per second that's obviously ridiculous okay remember the first part of the journey is different so final velocity we don't actually know change in displacement we know is that negative one one two seven change in time is the value we're trying to calculate and acceleration is 9.8 but because it's in the negative direction or it's downwards it has a negative so substituting in here we get that negative 1127 is equal to initial velocity of 322 times time remember to ignore your delta plus 1 over 2 times negative 9.8 times time squared preview there we go that is exactly what we wrote down in this step and then we calculated our final answer was time is equal to 69.05 seconds don't forget your units preview looks good now what was the total the rockets total flight time okay was we just calculated that from this point all the way up and down to this point was 69.05 seconds but it also had the seven seconds according to them until the engine stopped we just calculated the time from when the engine stopped until it reached its final position so here the answer is 69.05 plus 7 so 69.05 plus 7 gives me 76.05 seconds there we go this question took me almost half an hour to answer but we learned a lot in this process see you in the next video